Hey, what's up? So today I wanna to walk you through a VFX technique that I use in 100% of my photo reel renders. It's actually the technique I'm using to light this CG ball right here. And that's with a custom, the keyword is custom HDRI. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make your own. High dynamic range images or HDRIs are special for a couple reasons. First, when exposed up or down, they actually retain proper exposure values unlike other file types. This works because they're made from a combination of multiple images taken at various exposures. And secondly, when wrapped around a CG environment, you can actually use the image to light your scene. Okay, so to begin creating our custom HDRI, we need to take a series of bracketed images at different exposures of our 360 degree environment. And there's a few ways to do this, but I'll start with the easiest way. This is a 360 camera, specifically the 1R from Insta360. It has two lenses, each capturing one half of the environment. And I love this thing because it's small, very portable, and super easy to use. So the next thing you need to do is figure out where your CG element is going to sit. In our case, we had a chrome ball sitting right here. So I'd wanna take my HDRI from right here. It's gonna match your reflections. Your lighting will be a lot more accurate, okay? So the closer you can get your HDRI image from to the actual place where your CG object's gonna be sitting, then you're gonna be set up for the best bet. Okay, you wanna use a monopod when you're doing this. Um, this 360 camera is so wide, it's going to capture any legs of a tripod, no problem. It even captures these legs right here. So you just wanna make sure that when you're shooting this thing, you're using a monopod so that you don't have to paint out all your tripod legs in Photoshop. I got this for like, I don't know, 50, 60 bucks on Amazon. Super easy, super cheap. So now all we have to do is take our bracketed images. Just make sure your darkest image retains your brightest highlight detail and your brightest image retains your shadow detail. Now, if you don't have a 360 camera, you can do this with a DSLR and a tripod. This is actually the way that everyone did it um, before 360 cameras came out. It's just gonna take a lot longer because you're gonna have to take an image at every single angle. First, a full 360 with a level camera. Second, with the camera angle down at 45 degrees. And lastly, up at 45 degrees. Now, the upside to doing it this way is that you'll have a super high res HDRI. And you'll actually be able to use it as an actual background because it's gonna be so high res. But in our case, I think it's a little overkill just because we're not using it as a background. We're using it to um, inform our lighting for our scene as well as the reflections. So we just have to keep in mind what we're using it for. So I think a little overkill and takes a little too long. So now let's talk about stitching. All right, so since I shot on a 360 camera, I don't need to stitch anything together. It, it basically comes out as a full 360 panorama right out the gates. So that saves us a ton of time. All we need to do is just convert them from their native format to JPEGs. So since I shot on an Insta360 camera, I am in Insta360 Studio. This is their proprietary program. Very simple, very easy to use. So I'm just gonna drag these bad boys in. We got all of our shots on the left. The only thing you wanna make sure of is your stitching mode. You wanna make sure that that is normal across the board. Sometimes it switches it, uh, to like a dive case by default or whatever. If you don't do this, we're going to get some unwanted ghosting effects and no one likes ghosts, no one wants to be haunted, so definitely make sure that these stitching options are uniform across the board. Then all we'll do, select everything, batch export, target resolution, definitely original, of course. Yeah, you wanna go for the highest quality and just put it somewhere where you won't forget. Now, if you shot on a DSLR, you're gonna have a couple hundred images and you're gonna have to take those and stitch them together in a program like Photoshop. Which is actually pretty easy, so let's just go file, automate, photo merge, and for our purposes we want to uh, choose a cylindrical layout. So since we had three exposures, we'll have to do three photo merges. So let's just do one of these at a time. We'll open all those, and let's check vignette removal, geometric distortion correction, and content aware fill, transparent areas. You can do this uh, after the fact as well. And we'll just hit OK. Wait a really long time, and you'll have your photo merge. Just make sure you give it a crop. I usually do two by one ratio and find the halfway point somewhere around there. And you got a nice seamless stitch. Do this for the rest of your exposures. So let's finally merge all of these photos together to make our HDRI. So I'm gonna drag the panoramas from the 360 camera into Photoshop here. 
and you can see how the camera doesn't move because we got our stitch settings correct. So now we have all these images across the top. We've loaded in everything into Photoshop. All we need to do is go to File, Automate, Merge to HDR Pro. So we're prompted with this dialog box. We'll just add open files. All right, that's everything that we just dragged into Photoshop. And we don't need to attempt to automatically align source images because we already checked that again with our stitch settings. So let's just hit OK. Boom. So now we're looking at one image and it's made up from all of these images that we took. All right. And you can see here the exposure values. We got plus five almost and down to minus 10. So there's two settings we want to check here to make sure that this gets exported properly. First, we want to make sure we complete our toning in Adobe Camera Raw. If you don't check this, the image might come in dark in our 3D program. And the most important thing, your mode has to be set to 32 bits or else this will not work. This will not be an HDR image. We can't even save it as an HDR image. It'd be like Frodo marching all the way to Mordor in all three movies. And at the end, he's just like, you know what? You know, I'm just gonna chill. I actually forgot the ring. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go back for it. So let's just make sure guys, this is at 32. And don't worry about removing any ghosts because we properly exercise this footage in the Insta360 Studio application. All right, so let's just hit tone and ACR. And you can see here, if we adjust the exposure, it's actually retaining the highlights. Unlike a JPEG where the lights will just kind of gray out, we're still getting these really bright uh, white values here in the lights. And that's exactly what we want. That's the whole point of creating an HDRI image so that it can light our scene as accurately as possible. But we don't need to adjust anything here, all right? We're just gonna hit OK and make sure you just undo the Adobe Camera Raw bit. Again, it's just a step we need to take so that our HDR image doesn't come into our 3D program looking all dark. So from this point, you can totally just clone stamp out your monopod and slap a slap an exposure adjustment on it, you know? How you set the exposure here is how it's gonna look when we drop it into our 3D program. And finally, we'll go File, Save As, and make sure we save it as a radiance file, a .hdr, all right? High dynamic range, boom. Throw your new creation in a 3D scene and render something sweet. So get out there guys and make some custom light maps. It's super fun. But if you guys would rather just buy a pack or something and wanna support more videos like this, I actually put together a series of 14 post-apocalyptic battlefield inspired HDRIs. I got them up on Gumroad for y'all and it's about the price of like a large Los Angeles coffee. But be sure to subscribe because you do not wanna miss my custom surface imperfection tutorial. We're gonna be making our own from scratch. And in the meantime, I'll see you guys on Saturday morning for my Cinema 4D live stream. We make cool stuff like this, and this, and sometimes like this. And then I issue a weekly challenge to you guys where we talk about it and work on it in the Discord server. The link's down below as well. But good luck on your CG voyage. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.